Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com and I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the evoke potential especially the brainstem auditory evoke potential the cranial nerves part 53 and on 8th cranial nerve the evoke potentials introduction the stimulation of sense organs or peripheral nerves evokes an electrical response in the corresponding receptive areas and in a number of subcortical relay stations However, one cannot place a recording electrode near the nuclear relay stations nor can one detect tiny potentials of only a few microvolts among the much larger background activity in the EEG. Therefore, these waveforms are maximized by the computer to a point where their latency and voltage can easily be measured. One of the remarkable properties of the evoke potentials is their resistance to anesthesia, sedative drugs and in states of reduced consciousness such as hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. The interpretation of evoke potentials be it visual, auditory or somatosensory is based on the prolongation of the latencies of the waveforms after the stimulus, the interwave latencies and the asymmetries in timing. So now let's talk about the brainstem auditory evoke potentials which test the integrity of the 8th cranial nerve. The brainstem auditory evoke potentials between 1000 and 2000 clicks delivered first to one ear and then to the other are recorded through the scalp electrodes and superimposed on each other by computer and thereby maximized. A series of 7 waves appear at the scalp within 10 milliseconds of each stimulus. Each of the waves is generated by a specific brain structure. So here you can see that there are 7 waves which are being generated by a specific brain structure. The first is about the auditory nerve. The second wave corresponds to the cochlear nuclei in the pons. The third wave corresponds to the superior olive nucleus. The fourth corresponds to the lateral lemniscus. The fifth corresponds to the inferior colliculus midbrain. The sixth wave corresponds to the medial geniculate body. And the seventh wave corresponds to the auditory radiations. So you can see the organ of corte, cochlear nerve, cochlear nuclei, lateral lemniscus and finally going to the auditory radiations. So here the stimulus is given. The amplitudes are measured and on the horizontal axis you can see the latencies calculated in milliseconds. So they are usually they are useful in detecting lesions of the 8th cranial nerve. The uses of brainstem auditory vote responses are that they are useful in detecting lesions of the 8th cranial nerve namely the cerebellar pontine angle tumors. Multiple sclerosis will show abnormalities of the brainstem auditory vote responses usually a prolongation of interwave latencies between first to the third wave or the third to the fifth wave even in the absence of clinical findings. They are useful in assessing hearing in infants who have been exposed to autotoxic drugs, in young children who cannot cooperate with the audiometry and in those with psychogenic or faint deafness. So these are the usefulness of brainstem auditory evoked responses which can detect and pick up the subclinical pathology. I hope you have enjoyed listening to the concepts of evoked potentials, especially the brainstem auditory evoked potentials. The other important concepts of neurology, I have put it in a question and answer format uh, in the book called Focus Neurology written by me S. Srinivas, which is useful for all students. This book, if you are interested, can be bought online from all leading booksellers, including Amazon. If you have enjoyed listening to my lecture, please like and share the link, but please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.